welcome back to my channel. This is Alex from Alex's Innovations, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable Kumihimo bracelets. These bracelets are so cute and simple. They're only one color, although you can make them different colors, but I won't be showing you how to do that today. Just the simple kind. But they're really cute because they're just kind of long and skinny, and they have this little loop at the top, and you can wrap them around. You can wear them in any combination of colors. The style is called Kumihimo, which is another name for Japanese braiding. This is an ancient Japanese technique that's gone back many years, but we have an easier way to make it, and that's by using this foam disc. Um, it has designs on the other end, but I'm just going to be using the white side <laughs> just for ease of explanation and so you don't get distracted. So I'll be showing you how to make this. So in order to make this, you're going to need four strands of the same color. So I've cut four strands of the string, and each string is going to be about a meter long. It's a little shorter than your typical bracelet, and then fold it in half. And one of the strings I've made about maybe a foot longer, so it's like 30 centimeters longer than normal because I'm going to be making a beginning loop. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth about how to make a beginning loop because I already have a tutorial for that, so go check that out. But I'm just going to show you kind of the steps that go up <laughs> until making the loop. So I'm first going to fold my strings in half, like that, so this is the middle point right here. And then I'm going to make a slip knot. Um, a slip knot's really easy, it's a technique commonly used in crocheting, although I have repurposed it for the uses of temporarily making a knot in order to just secure the strings. First I'm going to pinch the midpoint with my right hand, and then I'm going to wrap the left side of the string under my index finger and bring it up. And then I'm going to pinch that crossing point. Then I'm going to make this loop a little bigger and bring this string through the loop. And grab that loop and pinch that boundary and then pull. And so that way I can easily release the strings, voila, magically. So for later when we're done making our beginning loop, then we can still have everything without the knot and stuff. So <laughs> I'm going to be making the beginning loop now. So again, I'm just going to skip past this, but check out the tutorial I have on this. Okay, so I've made the top part of this beginning loop and I still have my slip knot in, so I'm just going to quickly take that out. And then I'm going to fold this so it creates more of a loop shape, something like that. And in order to secure this, I'm going to be doing, I think it's called a square knot, but I'm not completely sure. I've done this in other videos if you watch, but I'll just show you quickly now. So I'm going to pinch the loop so that the two ends are together like so. And then I'm going to separate one of the strings from each side so it looks like this if I unpinch it and then just moving it back together, it looks like that. And then with the left one, I'm going to make a backwards, no, that's a forwards four. Yes, I know my numbers. I'm going to make a four over the whole bundle, and then I'm going to bring my right string over, and then under the whole bundle, and through that loop. It's harder doing this without a clipboard. I haven't yet figured out how to add my clipboard to this camera view, but I'm working on it, guys. Um, Alright, and then I'm going to repeat that on the other side, but opposite. So, everything is solidified. So now I'm going to take the right string and make a backwards four over this bundle. And then I will take the left side, bring it over, and underneath. Wow. Great. So now our beginning loop is solidified. It's super cute. Sometimes when I have to make more than one kumihimo, I like to make all of the beginning loops at once because I think it's kind of cute just to see them all lined up in their different colors. <laughs> but we're only making one today. Now let's grab our foam disc so we can set this up on our disc. This disc is pretty easy to find. I'm going to try and find a cheap one and put it in the description. I personally like foam more than cardboard because if you use the cardboard ones a lot, then these little thingies can kind of bend and break. But this one's foam. I've had it for a few years and it's working really well. The paint's coming off, but on this side where there's no paint, it is perfectly good to go. So there are now a total of eight strings here. And so the goal for here is to evenly distribute all of the strings around this disc. So I'm going to stick the loop inside like that and just kind of hold it there with my thumb. I don't want it to go anywhere yet until we're done. So I'm gonna kind of hold it underneath, maybe with my fingers, just to solidify it so it's in one place so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to grab one string and bring it all the way to the left. And then I'm going to bring another string and bring it right next to that one, just like that. All right, and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab another string and bring it to the top. 
and you want there to be approximately 90 degrees. This isn't perfectly the center, we'll move that later, but you want it to be approximately 90 degrees. And then I'm going to take another string and bring that right next to that other top string, just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the left, so I'm going to grab a string that's closest to the left and bring that, and I'm going to try and make it so it's all the way across from these ones on the right. Then I'm going to grab another string and bring that one right next to that other one on the left. And finally we have these two strings on the bottom, so I'm going to separate those and solidify those in those loops. And now this thing isn't perfectly in the center, so I'm just going to grab the strings a little bit and try and rearrange uh, some of these strings just to make sure that everything is somewhat in line. <laughs> And then you can kind of like finger comb, do finger comb to make sure that all of these are not tangled because you don't want to start with their tangled because that would be bad. All right, so once you're set up, the whole process is only three steps and these steps are really simple. So let's go. The first step is we're going to start at the top. And so at the top, I'm going to take the string that is on the right. I'm going to take it out and then I'm going to bring it down 180 degrees clockwise. And then I'm going to stick it back in that little spot. Then not this one, the one that we just put down, not the one next to it, but the one that's all the way in the left, opposite. I'm going to grab that one out, bring it 180 more degrees clockwise, and then stick it right next to the string that's on the top. So that's step two. Step three is you're going to take the whole setup and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, where you have four more strings that are ready to go. So I'm going to repeat this, because obviously that was really short. So <laughs> I'm going to take the string that's on the right at the top, I'm going to remove it, and I'm going to move it 180 degrees clockwise and bring it down. And then I'm going to take the string that is all the way in the left at the bottom. I'm going to remove it and bring it 180 degrees to the top. Alright, and then once we're done, I'm going to move the entire setup 90 degrees clockwise. And we're ready to go again. So this entire process is only made up of these three steps. And once you get the hang of these three steps, you can do it almost without looking and don't tell anyone, but it's really easy because this is a pretty stationary setup. It's much easier than like knotting a regular friendship bracelet. Um, I actually like to do this on Zoom calls because I can kind of keep it under the desk and no one really knows, um, so I can make these pretty quickly. Um, each one of these takes me about 45 minutes, which sounds long to a non-bracelet maker, but to a bracelet maker that is really fast, honestly. So after kind of doing one cycle of this and rotating it, I kind of like to finger comb with my fingers just to make sure that things don't tangle up too badly, because if it tangles up badly, then you might have to cut the strings and start over. Keep doing this until the bracelet is as long as you want. I typically make mine about five or six inches, but come back when you've made it as long as you want and I'll show you how to end it. All right, so my bracelet is about as long as I want it to be. It looks like this so far, and we have the ties that are significantly shorter, but they're still long enough to make ties, so that's good. So what I'm going to do in order to finish this is I'm going to pinch as close to the base as I possibly can and just pinch it really hard and just keep it pinched and while you're pinching it remove all of these strings from the spokes of the disc and you can place that disc to the side so now I'm pinching at the bottom and this is where all of the strings come out and I'm going to do the same thing that I did at the top in terms of the square knot. This is going to just solidify it. And this is still like a, technically like a braid, so like a regular braid. This will unravel if I let go. So I'm going to keep it pinched. And with the string that is on the left, it doesn't matter which one, just choose one that's most convenient. Um, and then separate a string that's on the right as well. And then with the one on the left, make a four over the bundle. And then with the one on the right, Bring that over, under, and through. And then tighten that as best as you can while keeping everything pinched. Alright, and then I'm going to repeat this and reverse it. So now take the right string, make a backward four, and then with the left string, go over under the bundle and through. Great! 
now that we're done, I just have these eight ties, and you can end this bracelet however you want. I like to make two ties, so I split this into four and four, and then I usually make twist ties because that works best with an even number of strings, and the end result ends up looking a little something like this in terms of the tie. So I do twisty ties, and then I tie it off here. But I have a detailed tutorial on how to end the bracelet um, any number of ways. Um, in my comprehensive guide to starts and ends, so I recommend checking that out if you want to end your bracelet a different way. Alright, and then once you're done with your ties, then you are officially done with your kumihimo! Yay! I hope that this tutorial was helpful. Um, I personally just really like making this because it's just so quick and so easy, and they're kind of cute because you can have this little minimalistic touch. You can make a bunch of them to match all of your outfits, um, or create a collection, so give them all to your friends. So anyway, if you thought that this video was helpful, please consider liking and commenting on this video and subscribing to my channel because it really helps me out. Also check out my Instagram and my Etsy for more bracelet related content, and thank you so much for watching! I hope to see you next time! Bye!